Hey everybody, it's Brad. Uh, I've got a viewer mailbag special for you today. Uh, this is for Michelle, who uh, sent me a message saying that she had just bought the software and was trying to make a company logo. Can I help? Um, so she sent me the logo, and um, we're going to take a look at it and, uh, and and see what we can do with it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up as a backdrop using the backdrop tool here, and we're going to take a look at what we're working with. Um, so let's see, it's this CarQuest logo here. Go ahead and open that. Okay, so this is a pretty simple design. It's two colors. Uh, we've got some lettering and some shapes uh, and a little um, registered trademark uh, thing there. Um, so this design is, is, is simple enough that we could probably get away with auto-digitizing it. Um, but I would probably, if I was doing it myself, I'd probably digitize it by hand. Um, so first I'm going to auto digitize this and then we'll switch gears and do it manually. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the auto digitizing. First I'm going to right click and unselect show backdrop here. I only put that up so that we could look at the image. Uh, and I'm going to go to the auto digitizing wizard. It's the um, up here. I think by default it looks like a cross stitch or something. But if you hit this little arrow next to it, this flyout menu comes up and you're going to choose auto digitizing wizard. Uh, select the image, uh, car quest, there it is, and we're going to hit next. Uh, from here, we're just going to hit next again, although actually I'm going to change the width. We'll set this to 100 millimeters. I want this to be about a 4-inch design. It's going to end up being a little under that because the, um, the color, and the C and the T don't reach all the way to the edges. I could actually compensate for that by moving this grayed in area here like that and then changing my width to 100 so I'm gonna do that that way this design is pretty much four inches wide uh, okay now we're gonna hit next and I am uh, going to edit this image slightly and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit it to remove this little register trademark logo here generally when I make a, a company logo for somebody they don't want to have the little R there um, but if you want it there you could leave it um, I'm going to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, I'm going to hit Edit Image, uh, then go and choose the Fill with Color, which looks like a paint bucket, and choose White for my color, same as the background, and just click uh, on the R and on the circle around it, and it will be gone. Uh, the rest of this looks totally clean. Uh, it's a pretty good quality image that she that she gave me. So we're just going to exit. Go up to the little file menu here, and choose Exit. When it asks to save, hit Save, and you can see that my little R is gone. Uh, so now we're going to hit next, uh, hit next again, and leave all this the, at the defaults and hit finish. Okay, so here's what it's come up with here, uh, and I'll put it in 3D so we can see it a little better. We've got our, our little blocks of color, but if you look, these letters look pretty atrocious. Um, so how can we fix that? Well, there's a couple different ways we could do it. Uh, let's go ahead and select all the letters. Just left click and drag around the letters so that only the letters are highlighted. I could go down to the artwork button down here and convert these letters into artwork which I could then go in and manually apply stitches to. Uh, and we can see that it has actually, when it traces, it traced these letters in um, you know, it broke up the Q and it broke up the R and the E and the T into separate pieces. Uh, we could go in and and, uh, and and manually apply stitches to each of these. Like, I could choose the C. Uh, let's see, I, I usually, at this height, I would probably make the letters a satin stitch. So I could go and use the, um, the satin tool down here. Put the inclinations in myself by left-clicking and dragging from one side of the letter to the other, like this. and then hitting the select tool and then going on to the next one and I would actually have to break this one up because the software for whatever reason didn't break it up for me so I'd have to go in and slice this using the slice tool which is in the shape toolbar here slice slice okay and then I'd have to slice off this one slice slice Okay, and then I could digitize this part with the satin stitch tool like this. Okay, and then do the inner part of the A as well. 
Okay, so I could do that. I could do that for this whole thing, but really, for for your first digitizing project, I wouldn't probably tell you to do it that way. But that's that's a way that you could do it. But let's find it an easier way. I'm gonna just hit the undo button. It's this blue backwards facing arrow. I'm just gonna undo until I get back to what we had before. Keep on undoing. Oh. All right, there we go. So now we're back. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go and reselect these letters. So instead of uh, going in and manually doing each one, uh, this this software has a pretty sweet feature called Auto Satin. So I said I wanted these to be a satin stitch, um, uh, a satin stitch letter. So um, instead of doing it manually, I'm going to try out the Auto Satin button, which is down here. This is the last one in this section, and when you hover your mouse over it, it just says Auto Satin. We're going to left click that. Hey, that looks pretty slick. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's um, that's that's pretty great. Now we can still tighten this up a little bit. Like if you look at my C here, you see how the end of my C is not perfectly straight. Um, we can actually fix that, uh, and it's a lot easier to go in and fix these minor issues uh, than it is to go and draw the whole thing in manually. Although it is a good idea to definitely learn how to do it manually. Don't get me wrong, um, but uh, the auto set tool is pretty sweet. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and left click on our letter and we are going to choose the shape tool and if you hit the little arrow under the shape tool a flyout menu will come up and one of the options is add inclination that's what we want to do and instead of adding a new one in we want to take this last one here on the top and drag it so that it is perpendicular to the end to the uh, you know the end of the C there and we're going to do the same thing for the bottom one and we'll just go ahead and hit the select tool there see how much cleaner that looks so anywhere that you see that like down on the bottom of the A and the R uh, you know our U looks okay our E has a kind of a little funkiness to it uh, but you can actually go in and, and tighten those things up uh, so yep there we go that's how you would use the auto digitizer to um, to make this this design and then go in and kinda tighten it up to make it look a little bit better uh, after you run it through the auto digitizer so how would we go about digitizing this manually well um, really not that much harder to do it uh, we just have to pick our own stitch types the whole time uh, so let's go ahead and do that first I'm gonna go and create a new file so I'm gonna go to file and new uh, Okay, set my machine format and just hit OK. Okay, so we got a blank screen here, and we're we're going to go over to the backdrop tool, and this time we're actually going to use it to digitize. So we're going to left click on our backdrop tool, uh, and then go and pick the CarQuest image once again. I'm going to increase the size of this. I want this to be about four inches from here to here. And if I go and type in uh, uh, in the backdrop properties, it's going to change the size of the actual image itself not the logo so it would be changing the size of like the white borders of this image so I uh, I made it a little bit bigger than four inches um, actually I made I made it a little bigger than I meant to Let's size that down a little bit yeah that's pretty good uh, okay so now we are going to have to draw these segments in ourself um, okay so Let's go ahead and do the first red square here. And what I'm going to use to draw this in is the rectangle tool. So if I go up to the top here, these are my auto shapes. Okay, if I hit the little arrow, I can choose between rectangle, ellipse, triangle, pentagon, hexagon. Okay, so I'm going to pick the rectangle. Right, we're going to left click on that, and then we're going to left click and drag to create a rectangle that is the same shape as my backdrop image okay so I'm using these little squares here to just click and drag and make it so that it's completely perfect it really doesn't have to be dead perfect though honestly uh, I just am kinda anal about it so uh, we've got that um, I'm gonna take this and turn it red because it's a red square and then down at the bottom toolbar I'm gonna choose a standard fill which is just like a kind of a good way to fill in an area uh, with stitches um, We'll make this 3D so you can see it there. So, so we've got my, my nice stitches there. Uh, and now we're going to need another rectangle. Um, although, you know what, I'm going to do all the red first and then all the blue. So we're going to go straight down to the, um, the next rectangle down here. But Brad, you say, that's not a rectangle at all. 
that is some kind of weird shape. And that is true, uh, but it started life as a rectangle, and I'll show you how to uh, replicate this shape here using the artwork tools built into this Floriani software. So first we're going to go up to the rectangle tool, we're going to left click on it and start in the upper left hand corner of the shape, just like we did with the true rectangle. And we are going to left click and drag so that it is just the same size as it would be if it were, in fact, a regular old rectangle. Okay. Um, now we're going to get a little creative. We need to go back over to our shape tool and if it's grayed out just hit the little arrow next to it and choose shape. Uh, and then we're going to choose edit path here from this little flyout menu. We are going to add a point right here where the edge of the shape is really. So we're going to right click and choose add point and then we're going to left click and drag this corner out here towards the middle we're going to right click on that point and choose symmetrical. Then you're going to left click on the point and you're going to see these little swirly guys. See the little swirly guys here? And that allows you to manipulate the curve. Okay. Now notice how this comes up into a weird spot right here on this corner. If we right click on this corner and tell it to make it align that will get rid of that weirdness and look how close I am already to matching this curve. So I can either move my point to attempt to match the curve perfectly or I can left click on my point and move my swirly things. See how easy that is? You can make pretty much any shape with this. Now I've kind of lost the uh, there we go. So you just kind of drag it till it's perfect. And that's perfect enough for me right there. And uh, yeah, so now to generate this, I'll just go ahead and hit my select tool. And I can apply my stitches down here with the standard fill button. And boom, I've got a lovely little swooping shape in there. Perfectly drawn um, using mathematics. How great is that? Um, okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go and draw in the letters here okay so to do that we are going to play with the artwork tools some more this time instead of using an auto shape we're gonna draw our shape in ourself and the way that we're gonna do it is you're gonna go up to the line tool and I want you to start on the very tip of the top of the C you know, left click there and then go about a quarter of the way around and click again and then halfway around and then another quarter of the way and then back to the bottom of the C straight line up and this time maybe a third of the way on the inside of the curve and then halfway and then another third or so and then back to the bottom corner and then to the top and close the shape okay and right click now look at this that is not the same as that at all but that's okay we're going to fix that we're gonna go up to the shape tool again and you are going to right click on your second point here you right click on that and choose smooth and then right click on your next point or the skip a point go down to the next one and choose smooth again uh, actually you know what we'll make all three of these smooth you want to right click on this middle one and do smooth okay so that looks pretty good and we can actually change our curve by moving our points around till we get it exactly like we want and then again we're gonna go in the middle here and do smooth we're gonna leave these guys alone the corners we're not we don't want the corners smooth we just want the inner parts to be smooth good just like that and then we can adjust the amount of curve by moving the points and again we get these little flippy flapper things that you can actually if you click on the point you can then adjust the curve using these little spinner guys Okay, and then once you once you're satisfied with your curve, then you can you've got this shape. So let me move this out here so we can see it. So how, see how nice that shape looks? It looks pretty much just like that. And if it doesn't look just like that, you can adjust it until it does. Uh, let's see, I'll put it back. And now we're going to use that auto satin tool again to put the satin stitch in. We're going to left click on that, and oh my, what a mess it has made. So uh, here's a um, 
Here's a tip, the auto satin tool is not infallible uh, and we're going to fix this just the same way that we fixed the last one by going up to the shape tool and we're going to move, see what it did, it actually put these inclinations in in a crazy fashion. We're going to move this inclination so that it's perfectly perpendicular to the edge just like that and there we go, a lovely letter C. Okay, so that's how you're going to trace the outside edge of your letters. Um, but wait, we've got this letter here. This letter has holes in it. That's okay. We're, what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw this in sections. Okay, we're not going to draw it all at once. We're going to draw each line that's one continuous satin stitch. We're going to draw in by itself. So we're going to do this outer part of the A and then the crossbar on the A. Or if we wanted to, we could do this curve, this straight line, and then the cross part on the A. We have kind of the, the freedom to choose which which way we're going to digitize this. It's kind of up to you. Uh, and also it's up to you what order you have them sew out in. If I digitize this guy first, and then this guy, and then this guy, the crossbar is going to be underneath of these two pieces. Uh, whereas if I do this last, it'll be on top. And I think the spirit of this font, and I'm no expert on fonts really, but I think in the spirit of the way that this font looks to me, I think that the crossbar should be underneath the other two. So let's go ahead and, uh, and sharpen our tracing skills here and uh, use the straight line tool again. We'll start on this bottom left corner, and then I'm going to go up until the line is no longer straight and then I'm gonna go just a little ways along the line another little ways along the line and then to the well you know what I think I'm gonna go straight down to here is what I'll do and then to here to here and then straight down and then over and if your lines if your points are misplaced a little bit you can always go back and edit them using the shape tool uh, so yeah let's go ahead and uh, right click to generate that go to the shape tool and let's start moving our points around a little tiny bit here I want to turn this one into a smooth okay and then I can again I can move that around we'll turn this one into a smooth and again you right click on the point to make it that way and I'm just moving my points around a little bit till I'm satisfied with how they are okay and that looks okay that looks okay to me we'll go ahead and uh, and turn that into a stitch again it did an atrocious job so we have to go in and manually set where our points are going to be so we'll make that totally flush on the bottom or our inclinations rather so we want this to go flush against that lovely and now we're going to do this straight line here now that's this is easy this is this has got just one little tiny bit of curve to it so we'll go ahead and do this and draw a rectangle one point in the middle to there shape tool turn this guy smooth and we can actually put that little bit of curve to it and if you can't see it you can actually zoom in I'm just gonna roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and then pan around for some reason the left arrow key doesn't work anymore to pan you used to be able to just hit the use the arrow keys but somehow they broke it and they made it so that the left arrow key doesn't work anymore when you're trying to move the design around in the design field when you're zoomed in whatever okay so we'll get our points so they're totally perfect and when you zoom in you can see it a little better okay so then I'll go ahead and auto column that boy auto column you are making some weird decisions today oh, I keep saying auto column it's auto satin I'm sorry it's another program that I use that calls this column stitches okay there we go okay and then oh <laughs> I said at the beginning I wanted the, the crossbar to be sewn out first and underneath everything, and then I went and digitized it in the wrong order. Way to go, Brad. Uh, anyway, this is just a rectangle, so we're going to use the rectangle tool here and draw that in, make it an auto column. Now, if I did do this in the wrong order, which I did, and actually I also want to have the, uh, the inclination going the other way for this, I want this to be 
the stitch direction to be going this way like that okay so if if you do something in the wrong order like this you can actually just move it in this sequence view this is what order things are going to sew out in I wanted this to sew out first I'll left click and drag it up the sequence view lay it right on top of my letter C and it'll be the next thing that sews out after the C okay so if we watch this thing sew out it goes boop boop C A and that's what you're left with okay now we could have done this as one piece so if you don't like this just do this as one piece um, but uh, anyway so then you would proceed to do that for the rest of these letters so for the R I would do this in three pieces I'd have the straight line this curve and then this curve going into it I'd probably do this curve first and then this part and then this part if I was doing that uh, the Q the Q is actually an interesting case because it's kind of like a perfect circle two perfect circles really and let me show you how you can make that quickly rather than because it's kind of kind of tricky uh, if you don't know how to use um, one of the other tools so uh, let's see we'll go up to the to the um, custom shape tool here and grab the ellipse which is a circle and the the first thing is when you're drawing a circle and remember we're gonna do this in two pieces so we can draw this perfect circle first uh, when you're drawing a circle on a computer you want to imagine a square around that circle and trace that square because watch left click and drag and it falls almost perfectly in the right place what most people do is they try and use the corner of the circle and then trace that and that just doesn't work see how it doesn't line up um, that's because the circle is generated within the square that you draw um, when when you left click and drag so you're imagining a square that starts here and here okay and then you left click and drag and you'll get a circle just in the right in the perfect spot okay so to make this circle satin stitch what we need is we need to have the outer part and we also need to have the inner part so we're going to trace both of them like that and then you need to have both of them selected so we're going to hold down the control key and then left click on both of our artwork circles then we can right click on them in the design field here and choose combine and that makes them one shape which can be easily auto satined now that's supposed to be blue so we'll make it blue uh, but Anyway, so that's how you would do that. And then we could go and do our, our uh, little crossover on the queue here, which really ought to be under the queue if we're going along my um, kind of imagined definition for the way this font works. Uh, so let's see, we'll go ahead and turn that into a satin stitch, and then we'll drag it to the other order so that that sews out before the circle and that makes our nice Q. Uh, let's see the U is simple it's just one single shape the E I would do the outer part of the E the inner part of the E separate and I would do the inner part first the S and the T are simple so that's pretty much it um, that's how I would go about doing this I'm not gonna completely finish tracing this whole thing because um, it's time for me to put my kid to bed actually so I'm gonna go do that uh, I hope this video helped and um, helps some other people too because I'm just going to make it public so anybody can watch it. Um, Michelle, thank you for uh, your message and I'm glad you're enjoying my videos. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.